This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Franklin Township Environmental Commission in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. Adequate notice of this meeting has been posted. Um, roll call. Uh, I'll come back to Maria. Um, Robin Sudam. Here. Uh, Stan. Get out here. Okay, Walter Andrews, I'm here. Paul Walensky, not here. Uh, Ted Chase, here. Jessica Johnson, she's not on, right? No. All right, and Maria Santiago Valles. Not here. Oh. Okay. Um, did you call my name? I didn't hear it. Oh, how did I? Maybe I missed That's it. Call. You know, you're right. I'm sorry. Uh, Arnold Smith. What am I I'm doing here. here? I keep, I did that last time. It's no. because your, your name doesn't have any marks behind it. It's just clear. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Invisible ink. <laughs> All right. Um, if we continue with the, with the chair report, you know, I was just saying that uh, uh, I think three of you have additional items and we'll make sure that we get them in. And I, I believe we got some, an additional request to appoint someone to the, uh, I'm sorry, have a member of the environmental commission replace, um, what's the, or on the planning board. Can I comment yeah. on that, Walter? Yeah, you might as well. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm on the screening committee and I spoke to Ron Jordan today and he advised me that we should put that off for the time being. Oh. No more explanation than that. Okay. No All right. explanation than that, but we should table that for now. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. Um, the minutes of the uh, August 2nd meeting um, were sent out. Uh, ho hopefully you all had a chance to read them and uh, as prepared by Ted. So uh, can I have a motion on the August 2nd meeting? I'll make a motion, Walter. Okay. I second, second that. Uh, moving a second that we approve the August 2nd meeting minutes as presented. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abs? Okay, thank you very much. That's all done and those will be, uh, okay. Uh, now we're ready for public discussion. Uh, any yes, we have public? three people. Oh, wait on the minutes. Oh. I, I think I had a, a thing in there where I didn't get something that Robin said, and I was hoping Robin would fill that in, which he hasn't. So the sentence that begins something like our sedan uh, commented that then doesn't finish. That should be removed. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what the topic was, Ted. If you remember now, I could try. Um let me I did see your note and I apologize for not following up on that. Well, I'm not surprised if I didn't get it. Uh, it's it's a sent about four paragraphs down starts with Paul Williams. Yeah. He reported on the plans and about the uh, fifth line yeah. down after that. Yeah, suggestion solar panels on the roof, EV charging stations, bike racks, previous paving in the parking lot. Um, no idling signs. Our sedan pointed out that. And which was the plan? What property were we looking at? Uh, I think this is the library plan. Correct. In Franklin Park. Um, they include two yeah. rain gardens and bioretention basin and the planting of 80 to 90 trees. I, I suggested, think... commented, include this, this, and that. Yeah, I think we covered enough there. You can take that line out. Yeah. 
It was probably something uh, like sidewalks are important because kids can walk there as well as ride their bike. Didn't you want to uh, suggest a uh, uh, green roof? I, uh, I intend to, at the planning board, to bring up having a sidewalk from uh, Claremont to the site. And the plans show the sidewalk, but they say not included in contract to be done at a later date. So I have to pursue that. Thank you. That because would be great. There should be a sidewalk from, because Claremont has a sidewalk. Exactly. Yes. Thank you, Ted. That would be great if you could follow up on that. Okay. Um, thank you. I just got a note from Maria saying she couldn't join by WebEx and she's on the phone and nobody hears her. Like, well, Daniel, okay. how can we help I her? was wondering that this was, yeah. um, I cannot make her panelist apparently, but you're on mute Maria now. Hi, <laughs> could you hear me now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I tried to use my Chromebook, but now I am trying to log in yeah. using my phone, and I'm being successful. So you see me soon. So yeah. I am. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. It's all, it's all one Do you want to participate in the vote? Hmm? We already had. We already had the vote. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Um. So I'm sorry. We were inviting. We were at asking for a motion to open to the public. Do we have make a, a motion to open to the public? Second. Get a second. Uh, yeah, I second. Oh, we've been moving second that we open the meeting to the public. All in favor say aye. 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 Who don't who don't approve say nay. Okay. Okay, stand okay. open. Okay, so Mark Renfrey, I'm going to unmute you now. Mark Renfrey says in text, nothing from me. Thanks. Okay, Rent Mark, I'm going to mute you again. Now I'm going to unmute Franklin Reporter. I'm good, thank you. Good, thank you for sticking with us. I'll mute you back. Um, and uh, Maria, I, I still see your phone uh, logged in. Do you intend okay. to? Okay, I'm going to I'm it. going to end the call and continue on Webex. Okay. Okay. Let me do that right. on my phone. Yeah. Uh, and I move to close the public session. I'll second that. Okay, I move to second that we close the public session. All in favor of the, no matter saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're back into our regular meeting now. Okay. And um Jessica won't be here and I believe she's the only one who handles the website email social media unless someone knows or has something that they want to contribute that would fall into this category in terms of social media all right and if we go down to the plans review Paul is not here but he did do a review and I don't have the email I did he share with everyone? Yes. Would someone read um, what he sent to us? Volunteer to do so. Okay, Welcome, Marie. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody can pull it before me. <clears throat> okay. Hold on. Let's see. Um, wow. Um, okay, oh, I got let's... it. So. Um, okay. Good, during, during this week, I reviewed the Voorhees townhouse proposal carefully. In review, I found that each of the 42 or 37 uh, units has an individual interior garage. Therefore, the easiest and least expensive way for the developer to encourage and advertise electric car ready to install 220 or 240 volt line in each garage. Um, also note that the application says 42 units. The environmental report says 37 units. If 42 is correct, some of the data in the environmental report is incorrect. Yeah. I just want to add 
uh, the 220 volts, the best is to install NEMA 1450. Uh, this is uh, a power outlet, which is compatible with uh, most uh, charging stations that are operating on the power outlet principle. And uh, that makes it very easy to install the charging station because you just uh, install the plate on the wall, the charging station and underneath is a plug and you plug it into the power outlet. So we should make a comment uh, suggestion like that. I think that's or, a good suggestion. Or if they just insist on just putting the wiring, uh, but you know, the, the power outlet is is really, you know, it, it's the easiest because if you put the wires, you still have to end them somehow. So to end them with a dead box or with power outlet, it's a minimum difference. And you still have to have capacity in the in the box, in the power box. Do we have any other comment regarding this one? I'm going to read. Maybe I should share the text. What's the location, Stan? I didn't get an email from Paul that I could see. So. Um, Voorhees Townhouse. Right, right. So right by the railroad tracks. Okay. I I don't know where because he doesn't mention address, but I guess you know. As I recall, it's three, actually three different locations in that general area yeah we looked at those last time yeah. right yeah one of them was across franklin boulevard north of franklin boulevard the other two i think were south yeah yeah so um the next one is for planning board uh, the library proposal is scheduled for first review by the planning board this Wednesday, September 1st, 2021, Voorhees. I have submitted to Christine Woodbury the above comments. Okay, that's good enough. September 9th, 20... Okay, seven, September 27th, I suppose. Mm -hmm. sub, sub store. Uh, 104,000 square feet self storage facility on Elizabeth Avenue near Schoolhouse Road. This is adjacent uh, neighbor is part of Somerset Run. On one side, current occupant landscaping business and a residence. Recommendations, solar cells on roof possible, green roof. How about some kind of pervious pavement? Because with self storage, you have a lot of asphalt and a lot of roof. We can add that in, certainly. What do um, other people think? Particularly if that surface hasn't been asphalted yet, because um, I don't know how it looks like there. Um, Anybody has any knowledge about that? Uh, I'm guessing it's Ruben's landscaping. No. So there's probably not a lot of asphalt there. Okay, so if not, it's worth uh, to put the uh, permeable asphalt. I think what typically happens is we make the suggestion and the applicant's engineer says, well, we've already done a, met the requirements for uh, water management. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it uh, reads further down. Lot coverage goes from 16.7% to 30%, well within 60% a lot. However, by retention basis, is this within new regulation, right? Um, so I don't know uh, whether the new regulation is uh, bypassing uh, the 60%. What would be the new regulation if we have 60%? Would it change? Is the no, new regulation in, in effect? Well, I just make assumption that it is. Well, yeah, it is. It is in effect. The, the lot coverage wouldn't play into that. It's how much stormwater runoff you're generating or how much land you're disturbing. So the size of this would be required to do stormwater management. Um, 
the new rule basically states that you have to look at green infrastructure as the first line of stormwater management um, mediation or retention or anything like that. But there is a caveat in there that you, you know, you do as much as you can. And then when you can't do any more because of the shape of the property or how much property is left over, then you can move to conventional stormwater management practices after that. I see. So 60% is the hard line. And it's up to them to decide whether they can uh, drop it, right? For the township ordinance, you mean? No, no. Uh, for the developer, the de because sixty percent <laughs> is the hard line. That yeah, from yes, that is the hard line in terms of yeah. If they go above that, they would need to um, get a variance. Variance and stuff, yeah. So, but uh, so oh, regarding. Uh, Yes. Sixty percent is a hard line in the sense that they are not supposed to exceed that much coverage, no matter what. Some, do. but they even when no matter how much they're below that, they still have to manage some stormwater, and it right. should be managed with green infrastructure to the extent feasible. Yes. Right. Yes. I'm looking yeah. at the site plan. I looked at it before Paul and I did um, have a, a call earlier in the week. So I can kind of learn about his, how he goes about reviewing things and where he gets the plans and all that. So I'm kind of starting to now get into this. So just, there is two bioretention basins proposed on the property to treat the storm water. So there's one that's a little smaller. Um, uh, it doesn't say exactly how large it is, but it's basically to the northeast of the pro of the um, actual storage facility. And then there's a larger bioretention basement directly south of it. Um, so that's probably where the runoff is going towards. And they are looking to treat that with two bioretention basins. Right. Uh, there's also a 10 foot wide grass paver fire lane. So their fire mm. lane is being made out of the grass pavers. Mm. So it, it looks like they have already done uh, something above and beyond because after all they are uh, to 30%, right? They are quite well uh, below 60%. So that would probably answer the question. Well, that's for lot coverage. So that's different yeah. than what's the stormwater and management rules for them treating stormwater green infrastructure is based on if they've disturbed more than one acre of land or created more than one quarter acre of impervious coverage. So that's separate from the lot coverage rule. Okay, um, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I am looking here too. It looks like they actually I saw I didn't see this before. There's a little small bioretention base and a third one proposed um, to the southwest of the storage facility. So they're putting three bioretention basins. Do you want to sh do you want to share your screen? Yeah, sure. If you want, I didn't want to, you know, take over there. Okay. Um, how do I do it? Make presenter. Yes. Okay. Now you can. All right. Give me one. Okay. So all right, let's see here. Let me just move this. Okay, so we have the bio. This is the storage facility. Um, here's the bio retention basins I was telling you about before. So you got one over here and then one over here. Um, we probably, if we put contours on this page, I'm sure that the runoff's going that way. So that's why there's two right in a row, it looks like. But just this is the right way to do green infrastructure, having these smaller and more, instead of having one giant rain garden or bioretention, it actually makes better sense from a green infrastructure standpoint to do two separate smaller ones closer to the actual runoff source. And Tara, um, can, Tara can you just refresh for us? These bioretention basins become part of their approved plan and they have to maintain them. Is that correct? Yes, they have to maintain them. That's part of it. Um, they have to be functional. They can never be dysfunctional at any point. So that is their responsibility. And who inspects to make sure that is the case? The township. I'm sorry? Does public works inspect these every three years or something? How does that happen? I think Probably. public at least once a year. 
-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Public works. They actually schools are pay a fee to support the inspection. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and Ted, what department is it that inspects those? Pardon yeah. Public works. Public works. Public works. Yep. Okay. Then over here, here's that, here's this fire uh, lane I was telling, where is it? Here it is. So see 10 foot wide grass pavers in here. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like there's a little, another uh, basin over here, bioretention basin three is over here. So they are treating a fair, you know, a lot of their stormwater on site through green infrastructure. So that is a positive thing. I don't see any um, pervious pavement, but, you know. It doesn't have too much of a parking, uh, right? Yeah, the parking. It's just the, 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 is it north? Um, yeah, storage facilities typically don't have very much parking because, because they you don't need to stay few there. People to be there at any given time. Right. And right. there's maybe one management person there. Okay. Yeah, that was for, and the amount of you know larger vehicles and things going in might make it difficult. These look like they're grass pavers too. This is probably a continuation of that. But I warn you, John House doesn't like grass pavers. Yeah. He will probably demand that they have real pavement. Yeah, and then see if they do do that, then they'll have to, whatever little bit they're treating with this, they're going to have to treat some other way, either by putting another basin in or something. They're going to have to come up with something if he, if that gets denied. So that's the plan for that. Um, if they had put on a green roof, that would give them more wiggle room. Yeah. Maybe yeah. five years from now, they'll start thinking that way. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So that's that one. That's what we got for that one. And um, um, yeah. Paul had another comment. Uh, he had the uh, a comment about lighting outside is already specified as full cutoff LED. And he's saying in parentheses that uh, his guess, my guess, uh, closing hours will be specified, but lighting spillover to nearby residences will undoubtedly be a discussion point. Oh, yeah. That, and these do tend to, um, these lights at these facilities do tend to stay on. Fifty foot residential landscape buffer and parking setback. Okay, so. Yeah. I don't. I heard, you know, the, the planning board also is hearing a various requests from the storage facility going in on Somerset Street. They built, they put in a part of the building, actually a rather small part, uh, about one inch too close to the sideline, so they have to get a variance. But in that application, they mentioned that their time, the time that it's open to customers is something like 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. I remember the 10 p.m. specifically. So we should, the basic thing is they have to provide that light from the lighting will not go off the site. Right. You get the right kind of lights aimed in the right way and you can do that. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna have to figure out how to do it because that is a requirement, especially with those residents so close. So maybe they will need a larger number of weaker lights versus fewer of heavy heavy duty lights. Does it oh, make sense? It's a matter yeah. of how those lights are designed. Mm -hmm. Typically, they put in what are referred to as shoebox lights. They're mm -hmm. essentially a box with the bulb inside, and that restricts the angle that the light comes out. The light spreads only to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And on the building, they typically will have lights that then shine downward. 
And again, right. they can be designed so that the light they admit only hits mm -hmm. the ground along the wall within their sight. So, so reflected or diffused light is okay. Mm -hmm. Right, because on sure. some surfaces it may reflect. Probably. If the lights go down to the ground, but then you also have shrubbery along the property line. That well, if the know, surface is wet from rain, then it may reflect the light. Uh, you know, I mean. Yeah. Do it. Do we happen to know whether Paul used the checklist, either that we developed or that um, Tara <laughs> took to the next level? No, he didn't. So we did talk about that. We have to go over that at the committee, you know, once we have time to go over it and get it approved, like by you guys. Okay. Um, because one of the important things is, is that once we start using that, we really have to use that for every one that we review. Yeah. So it's important that it's how we want it before. Because once you use it on one, you got to yeah. make it consistent. Be consistent. So yeah, we can go over that if we have time later at the next one. But um, but he uh, he thought the checklist would be a good would be good to use as well. Okay. Yeah, I don't want us to lose sight of that because work went into that, and it's it could be a great tool. Yeah, we, I have it good. So when we're ready to discuss it, then you know we can go over it, and that'll be good. Well, I was just look and see if there was a lighting plan in here. Um, well, could you right. put that? Could you put that checklist on our next agenda? Sure will. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of the lighting, I mean this this isn't going to do everything, but so the lighting is really here, you know, along this lane. A lot of the lighting, the residences are up here. They are proposing at least it looks like a lot of trees and trees. some buffering here, some vegetative buffering. Um, it says, I got I can't see that all proposed landscape beds are to be treated with 3 inch thick layer of double. Oh, that doesn't really matter. Um, but they are proposing a lot of vegetation, so that that should help a little with the lighting. But yeah, I mean, they're going to really have to make sure that that is shielded. So just something to keep in mind. And is that in Paul's notes? The vegetation, I don't know. Lighting. Oh, the vegetation is shown in the plan. Yeah, the lighting yep. he did bring up, I think. Yes, that the light, there could be light spillage. Okay. Um, there was... but that's the other thing I wanted to show you guys just while I have it up. So in this contour plan that they put here, this is a good way to look to at where it's a good place to put the basin. So they're proposing the basins over here and the, when the contour lines are on, you can see where a lot of the runoff is going to be going to, which is the closer these lines are together. The, um, the steeper, the grade, basically, so like where they're proposing a basin, it's, you know, over here, I don't think they can do 1, because they have something else over there. I have to look, but over here, all these numbers and the lines closer together is a steeper grade. So, kind of where they're putting it, you can see makes sense. Yeah. Again, John House may complain that there's yeah. no space for firefighters to work on that side of the building. Right. He might. You're right. You're right about that. We'll have to see what he says. But if he does uh, deny it, then they'll have to submit some new stormwater management. Yeah. Usually the board handles that by. Uh, directing the applicant to meet with John House to solve it, but okay, this will have to. We should. Well, I can certainly make the statement that if they do, he still has to sat. They still have to satisfy mm -hmm. the stormwater requirements. Uh, there's the light. Here's the lighting plan. That's yeah. not so good because so it's this is the lighting plan. plan. Maybe the one on the oh, left is oh, maybe better. Yeah. Uh, they so probably the left hand one there is the wall pack. That's right. good. That will only go down, but the area light looks a bit shallow and may spread the light rather widely. Yeah. So the northern property line, okay, there's nothing there. Southern property lines are saying zero, zero, zero foot candles. The parking lot is the main problem. 
Mm. Yeah, that's what you usually care about lighting. Yeah. Right? Um, they that's usually well. want to have at least wall lighting around all sides. Let's Maybe see, because I'm not. If it's on the outer parameter and if it's aiming inward, maybe, maybe it would prevent the light spillage. Hmm. So they're showing here what the township ordinance is and they are below, but yes, yeah, so the maximum to minimum uniformity ratio for parking you, lots, they're allowed to have 20.1. I'm sorry, they're required to have 20.1. They're just below at 18.1. Hmm. Well, let me let me go like this a little. Just get it. Can you do 100 percent, maybe. Oh, you can't see it that great. Hold no, on. no, no. Yeah, we. I couldn't see the table. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Sure. So the the numbers uh, they have to be lower or higher than. Well, so it looks like in parking required required is twenty point one. They're saying they have eighteen point one, but that it complies. So I'm assuming so max, I, you know, yeah. maximum to minimum. Probably the maximum, yeah. So they're okay, no? Yeah, complies. They're okay according to the ordinance. Doesn't mean that there's not going to be any, you know, spillage. I see. So it looks like oh, okay, so. They are, they just have a shield on it. Okay, so see some of these have like a side shield on it. So that is supposed to shield some of the light from falling over. Um, I guess that's what they're designed to do. I, you know, I can't attest to if they actually work or not. All fixtures shall provide sufficient shielding. That's what it says on their table. So they're going to have that light up and just put some shields around it so that it doesn't, um, you know, spill over. But so this yeah. doesn't look like it has the actual shield on it. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's a fair amount of lighting. Yeah, so it's good. It's important to you know keep track of that basically. Maybe but we can a, make a comment that we are not convinced that there is no light spillage. Is it fair? I don't know if it's. I mean, it's hard to say because the, there is a lot of buffer proposed between them and the residences. And I mean, these measurements, they all have along this property boundary is all zeros all the way across. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, it'd be interesting mm -hmm. to know. Oh, let me see if they put a calculation down here. Let's see. There is another comment that uh, Paul made that apparently they are planting 68 trees versus required 18. Yeah, they're planting a lot. Yeah. Hmm. So if the trees are sufficient barrier to the light spillage, maybe this will take care of itself. It'll take several years before those trees, I'm sure, that have any impact on blocking the lighting. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Are they going to be? Put, we can look at the landscape plan. Are they going to be put in at what height? That's the the question. I think they I put mean, the most, landscape. Most most trees aren't going to be put in at more than six to eight foot height. Yeah. I mean, and she even if only... that, even if that's the top of the trees, are going to be thin and. And it's and just unless it's like are, noise, you, you need a lot of trees to uh, yeah like, uh, thickness of trees to to block light or noise. And also, so if they that's are not, not something that we can depend on, um, they are not conifers that. that in winter they the, need the to they need to abide fall. by the regulation of the township mm -hmm. ordinance, and it appears they're abiding by the township ordinance. Yeah, um, here's the I tree. Guess, I guess we'll find them. out. Yeah. Here's the tree we'll replacement out. plan. So they give you a lot of, they give you the idea of the trees they're putting in here. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's see. I just want to see if they have, oh, here we go. Heights and stuff. All right, okay. Existing tree. And here's how they're replacing the trees. Oh, yeah. And they show you what's required for replacement. So see required for replacement 72. 
Hmm. Oh, here's their calculation. Seven trees plus the calculation equals 79 trees. That's what their 79 tree, yeah. Hmm. So it looks like they're replaced. They're proposing 79 trees, 15 of them are shade trees, 24 ornamental trees, and 40 are evergreen trees. And how are those all replacements? Those are replacements based on the calculation. So it looks like seven trees plus the calculation from B. Where's B? For that's 72. So yeah, they're required to replace 72 trees and they're doing seven more. Okay. We just don't know the size of the trees they're taking down. It, uh, I thought it was in the table, no? The size, yes. Yeah. So here they have existing tree to be removed and they show you how many. So, oh. yeah, so they're, you know, they break it down by number. Are there any big ones in there? Because it's too small for us to read that. Oh, let me replace it. It has that. Let's say. That's better. Yeah. Trees to be removed to see the numbers and on yeah. the left is the diameter. Okay. So they're they're removing fourteen trees, and they are removing a total of fourteen trees, and three of them are less than thirty-one. So you know they're about thirty inches because it's less than thirty-one, but bigger than twenty-nine. So it's like thirty inches. So I'm sorry, thirty. Yeah, thirty inches. Three of them are that size, and the rest are smaller than that. Okay. Well, they're putting in such a volume. I guess we really can't complain. Why is it required 72? Um, so they added up all of these here. This? The bigger the tree being cut down, the more replacements have to be supplied. Which right. Is actually in that column, number of replacement trees. Yeah. So see here, they're removing eight trees because here, but it's requiring right. them to replace 32. Because the size. Well, my yeah, comment that, that there will be 68 trees, so I just am confused. Well, so here's the ordinance. So here, if you take a one tree, if you take one tree down of like less than 21 inches right here, you're required uh -huh. to put four trees in its place. So they're taking eight of those down. That's where the 32 comes from. Uh -huh. Same thing with this. So that's how you end up. They're only taking 14, but they are re required to do 72. And those, um, Arnie, those um, tree spe um, species are native enough? Or diversity. Where are the white, pli uh, white pines being planted? I'll, I'll, I'll uh, reduce it and show you this tree. Hey, will be Atlanta. I, I only oh, worry about the white pines because if they're used as some kind of a, a buffer around the edge of a property, the white pines always drop their branches at some point and, and there's no, no buffer whatsoever then. And they're very shallow rooted, so they can go off in a storm easily. Yeah, and the Ilanthus, we would probably not recommend that. Of course, because it's uh, it's supporting spotted lantern flies. Right, so we should put that in our comments to get rid of that Ilanthus and replace it with something else. Oh, here's the white pines. Let me zoom out so you can kind of see where they're going. So this is where the white pines are. That's existing trees. Oh, it's not the existing? Oh, okay. Well, I, it's what it looks like. Is somebody keeping track of these comments so we can send them Not on to me? I, didn't. I can keep track of them. I, let me just figure out exactly where I am. I'm just trying to existing, existing. Yeah, where are the white pines going? Hmm. Actually, I don't know. Okay, you know what? I don't think they're saying they're going. They, these are what they've identified on site, and they're going to remove some of these. Okay, you read to us earlier what they're planting. Was that was white pine on that list? Um, 
Usually, you don't plant them in the chart. Yeah, it just says that it's shade trees, 15 shade trees, 24 ornamental, and 40 evergreen. Okay. So that's the 40 good are good likely to be white pine, right? No, oh, that's usually spruce. Okay. Or Douglas fir. Yeah. All right. I will let me write this note down. Um but yeah, that's the I think that the amount of vegetation they're putting out there in front with the light shield is gonna, I think it should at least solve that lighting problem. It shouldn't, I don't think there should be much light spillage, but we'll have to keep an eye. Sarah, if you have different microphone next time. Is it still acting up? Uh, we understand, but you know there are better microphones around. I think it's on too far away because I just got the microphone replaced. Uh -huh. oh, oh my goodness! All right. Okay. So does that complete the uh, review? That's it. Okay. Thank you, Tara. So That's helpful. Oh no problem. Okay. All right. If we. So, are they all? I'm, I don't remember. Second. Okay. Let, let me read everything from Paul. So okay. this was this thing. Uh, uh, October new new application PLN twenty blah 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 subdivision five residential houses on Belmar Street via new roadway. I guess okay. there is no comment on that. Stormwater to sand filter with underground infiltration basin. Then the zoning board uh, planned for September 2nd. Uh, most applications have been reviewed. New item, Kingsley Saki, outdoor pavilion in backyard on Easton Avenue, no trees in area. Okay, I think for the next meeting, if it's okay, I'm gonna work with Paul and we'll put together our comments on those. Um, so that we have like a more comprehensive like review for that because I have not had a chance to look at those yet. They're kind of we still have some time on those, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think that one's for October first or something. Yeah. And we remember to uh, also look at the uh, checklist. But so that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. So when when um, we have a few or if we have time, I don't know when we'll, if we'll have time, but as soon as you know, we can go through it. And if you all give me comments on it, or if you want me to email it to you ahead of time, and then I don't know what's easier, but. Well, we went through one comment period, but Robin, how would you want us to move to the next step on the, the, uh, the checklist? Well. Tara's um, layout of the checklist is different. It actually mirrors what other towns are doing for their environmental checklist. So I really do encourage people to take a look at it and mm -hmm. there are, it, and get your comments back. It's a little daunting when you look at it, but it's comprehensive. And a lot of it may be N-A, N-A, N-A. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think it would be a really good discipline for us to get into it. So if people could, Probably Tara should send it out again so people can find it easily. Okay. And, and please work it. You know, go go onto the township's website, pick any plan, and try going through that checklist. I think you'll find that a lot of that information maybe not be provided to us in the plans we see, but that's an interesting point of discussion because maybe we can start to ask for some of that. But I'll resend it. Yeah, I'll resend it. And then if you want to put it on the next agenda, we can go through it. And then, yeah, once we can yeah. try and start using it. It'll definitely be on the uh, next month, next okay. meeting okay. agenda. Thank you. Uh, well, all right. actually, the next meeting is <laughs> in August because it'll be 30th. 30th. Yeah. 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 I think it's August 29th. Remember, we oh. have to have. Three August. meetings in August because we don't have one at the beginning of September. It's the 30th and that's my husband's birthday. So I'm going to not be on that meeting. 
Well, all right. Well, I'll we'll we'll tell you that I will be on international trip. Oh my goodness. We might not be able to have a meeting. <laughs> well, um, let's let's pay attention to that as we get closer and uh, we will know at least a couple a week before maybe what we are looking at in terms of the forum. All right. Okay, okay I'm very good. Just without Robin. Yeah. <laughs> um so Walter, um, before yes. we move on, I think I had emailed you and said I'd like to comment on the uh, the data bag one big non institute uh, proposal. Yeah. Um, so if I may. Sure. Okay. Uh, so on August fifth, I listened to the virtual zoning board meeting discussion about the institute's application. The Snyder Farm owner had their Amy Green environmental experts testify. I had previously reviewed that Amy Green written report, and there was absolutely nothing in it about the scenic quarter issue or scenic vistas as written in our scenic quarter ordinance. Um, the second Amy Green expert, a planner, Michael Kalker, discussed the scenic quarter issue at length and the impact the proposed structure would have on the scenic vistas as discussed in our master plan and our scenic quarters ordinance, which discusses benefits of large tree stands. Um, Bob Thomas, the zoning board chair, and Peter Lanfred, the attorney for the applicant, both tried to dispute points Mr. Kalker made, but Mr. Kalker um, held his own and more, putting Mr. Lanfred, I felt, back on his heels by continuously bringing the discussion back to the scenic quarter or ordinance and how the way the proposal is, how the way the proposal is currently designed would ruin the scenic vista and it would not blend in with the character of the area. When Lanford tried to compare this proposed one story structure to other one story structures in the area, um, I believe most of them are are homes, houses. Mr. Kalker shut them down by saying, but the only the the, the other one story structures aren't 30 feet high like this one is. The reason I bring this up is because as requested by Mr. Snyder, a summary of the Environmental Commission and Shade Tree uh, Commission comments were sent to him subsequent to the Amy Green report being completed. He then sent that to his experts. So I like to think that our comments about the scenic court ordinance, the scenic vistas, and the planned review removal of so many trees have a lot to do with Mr. Alker had to say, what happened with what he had to say, I think it made a tremendous impact in proceeding impression on the proceedings um, again, based on what we sent and not what was in the Amy Green report. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to the attention of uh, the Environmental Commission. Um, the Zoning Board's next meeting when they plan on discussing this project, I believe, is September 2nd. Thank you, Arnold. Uh, uh, Alker or Kalker, the name? K-A-U-K-E-R. K A U K E R, I believe. Okay. K A U. All right. So that completes our plan review. Is that correct? Yes. All Arnie, right. thank, thank you very much, Dan. I'm sorry. Arnie, thank you for being present for that meeting. Um, oh, yeah. You're welcome. All right. If we go down to new business, um, we are concerned about where the township manager is with the bag for Franklin Day. And uh, I understand Bob Bornlocker is handling that all in his office. And I guess Tara, you, are you in communication with him or who knows what he's planning? I spoke to him this morning. Um, he, so the, they ordered the township ordered the tote bags, their natural organic tote bags. They ordered 2,500 of them. Um, they have the townships logo on them. 
And that was so that they could be given out at Franklin Day, also at other events and by, you know, multiple groups. So they ordered the, the highest amount of um, tote bags that they could get from the vendor. Um, so we'll have them in time for Franklin Day and then, you know, they can be given out at other events as well. And I think it would be a good idea if we have the opportunity, we stuff those bags with those brochures that Anjek did about the plastics ban. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of this is to promote knowledge about the upcoming plastics ban. And since they didn't put it on the bag, which we could have done, but they didn't pay attention to that. If we could print these stuffers and put them one in each bag or ask the township to do that, people would have solid information about what is happening 10 months from now. Okay. But typically what happened is that they have the, I'll call it the main tent or the one where Bob one locker and, uh, you know, commission com committees and what have you are, and we are there and we would be dispensing the bags and we would have the stuffers as well. I don't know if we want to do that before or at the time or what have you, but that's typically the way it works. Okay. And so and we so, need to, we need to prepare to have this the stuffers printed. Yes. Oh now is that upon us? Huh? Well I think you can ask public works to do it because that is approved yeah. spending of clean communities money. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tara. And, Tara, and Tara, I would ask, um, you know, who knows what's going to happen with that? And I, I agree that that is approved um, spending money. If it is coming from co clean communities, uh, do we know if that's coming from the clean communities, the grant as we had, as we had suggested, Tara? I'm not sure. That I'm not okay. sure if I can find out though. I, I only ask because of, um, you know, who's responsible for what as far as putting things into the bags um and if there's nothing in the bags um i guess the question for you to ask uh, mr bornlocker would be is it okay if we at the franklin day put different items in the bags okay. I, would, I, I wouldn't think it would be i wouldn't think it would be a problem but you know, you know especially stuff about you know the new ordinance the new regulation that's coming into effect but we could put other things in there um you know about the little tree menaces that we have going on now and other um items that we're having issues with these days having to do with the environment yeah and when is franklin day proposed yeah the 18th of September? Yes. Mm -hmm. From what is it, uh, 12 to 5? And it's at, um, the, and it's at the municipal complex this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So typically what we do as a commission, and hopefully we don't have any reason to change that, is that we want someone from the commission there throughout that period, but it's much shorter than before. So we could have, you know, at least two people for the first two or three hours. And, you know, we can sort of agree to a schedule or, you know, maybe we can, we can all be there, but um, we want coverage and uh, it's always good to have some faces behind the material. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem. We would do it like we've done it before. And if I have to request a special space under the main tent, then well, I will do that. So I think you should do that, Walter. We've yeah. always got that in the past. Yeah. I don't know if you've had to make that request or if they gave yeah, it. Yeah, I will. But just will uh, that. make mm -hmm. sure that uh, we're now not out in left field somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And just make sure somebody follows up that we get those flyers printed. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll take care of. Uh, well, printed. Yeah, we've had that request for printing before, and they can do it in house or they can farm it out, uh, depending on, I guess, whatever they figure is most cost effective. But we'll make sure they get done. Okay. okay. And if you need print, need help with what flyer, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will. 
Okay, uh, if we uh, what happened here? go to so we, we've sort of answered that question, I guess, really, um, in a sense. So the next item on the new business, excuse me, I my thing with it. Who has an agenda before them there? I do. I do. Okay. What's the next item, Tara? New, New Jersey Climate Resilience Planning. Resilience Planning. Oh, okay. Um, who was supposed to lead that? Well, there's been a lot of conversation going back and forth in emails. So maybe Ted is the best one to give us a summary. This is in response to the state mandate now that we have to take climate change into consideration. Oh yeah, yeah. And I had sent out an email showing that what various municipalities were doing and where they were getting the money to do this planning in a substantial way. And different municipalities are accessing 100,000 here, 200,000 there and doing a real professional job. And I'm curious to what the township views as what's needed and are well, we doing, are we going to do it robustly I mean, the, the first point is that this resilience plan is due the next time uh -huh. the land use element uh, which is some years away i don't know whether we last did it in 2018 or 2019 but you can see this quite a ways away we could, but Tara commented, we could start on this long before that. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I was thinking, so Ted's absolutely right. So the new mandate, which it's still surprising to me that it took this long to happen, but it's in, in addition to the municipal land use law. And it requires that um, when we update a master plan, which is required every 10 years, um, that a resiliency planning element be included or resiliency planning efforts be <laughs> included in that. I think my cat is back there. <laughs> um, this cat, I swear. Uh, so anyway. You don't uh, even get a vote. You, I, you can either add it into your update of your master plan, which a lot of municipalities are doing, uh, or, I mean, we can always, we've updated, we just recently updated our um, environmental resource inventory, our farmland preservation plan, and those are basically drafted as standalone plans and are then adopted as an element of the master plan. So if we wanted to think about coming up with some kind of document like this, um, that's one way we can approach it. Otherwise, I think Ted, you had mentioned the last time the land use plan was updated was 2016. So we still have another, you know, few years on that before it's updated, but it definitely is important to be, you know, putting resiliency into our master planning efforts. So and if we wanted to do it sooner, we could, as you say, it could be a standalone thing we, we offer. If we feel that there's enough compelling steps that we'd like the township to include. Yeah, right? the township can adopt it as an element to their master plan. And then when they update the master plan, it would basically, they would look at, they don't have to look at updating that as well, because really just the land use element has to be done and that would be still current. But I'm sure there's funding opportunities. Um, I was on, I'm on the executive committee for the American Planning Association, New Jersey chapter, and we had our meeting on Friday and we discussed this. I know that the New Jersey chapter is trying to put together a webinar and um, almost like a template you can follow, but we're just starting to work on that. So it could be a you know, little bit before that's done. Um, I don't know, but maybe we can get, if we're interested in it, maybe if we're, I, I can't say this, but I mean, it's something that I've just thought about out loud. And maybe if we're willing to kind of work with them on a template, like almost be like, I wonder if they're looking to like test it out on someone, maybe yeah. that's, you know, so we, I can, we can I be can a beta into, site. Yeah, yeah, I can look into it and see. Okay. All right. Well, one, um, I just want to add, I'm sorry, I just want to add one thing. I'm sorry, Walter, just one last thing. 
this doesn't really fall under the environmental commission for 100%, but it would be included in this resiliency plan, I think. You know, typically these resiliency plans are looking for, you know, um, infrastructure and, uh, you know, how are we going to deal with climate change and things like that. But one thing, uh, the, actually the vice president just said it recently is that an important thing to look at in resiliency planning is internet and access to internet. So, uh, you know, that okay. if we're going to be working with the planning board um, to adopt it, that might be something that we uh, partner up with them to figure out because that's so important to include in resiliency because without the internet, a lot of things are dysfunctional mm -hmm. now. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. All right, if we move along. Reduction. Um, um, a resolution, what am I talking about? Yeah, so we have that already passed before. the diverse resolution. Um, Tina was just following up on whether the um, council passed it or um, that, do you have any update? No, what I said was, I'm made council aware of it, but um, since it wasn't on the agenda for discussion, nothing happened, but we can check that it's on the agenda for the next council meeting. Okay. I, could, I guess I should send a message to the clerk to, or and the mayor to put it on the agenda. Yeah, that would be great. If you would do that, Ted, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Okay. The next time item on agenda is the uh, Rutgers Prep project yeah. with mm -hmm. Christian uh, Wright. Yes. Um. So yeah, there were some back and forth communication. So it, there was some delay. But um, I would like to thank everyone who made a comment about the the text that I prepared for Franklin reporter and advocate uh, reporting on the stream uh, cleanup um, and I'm going to read it now. Um, early this year, the Franklin Township Environmental Commission was contacted by Rutgers Prep senior student Christian Wright. Christian contacted us because he noticed that during the pandemic, our environment became increasingly more polluted, not only with the typical single use items, but also with personal protective equipment that came with the pandemic, such as face masks and gloves. As the Rutgers Prep campus is located near the Delaware Raritan Canal State Park and the Raritan River, the Franklin Environmental Commission suggested Christian and his team start the cleanup with the DNR Canal towpath adjacent to the school campus. This area is experiencing pollution from littering. With, the help, with a little help from the Environmental Commission, Christian was able to organize a school-wide community service event on July 16th. The group of six volunteers split into two groups and collected litter two miles up and down the towpath in each direction from their school, respectively. The cleanup was a success as the students collected one large trash bag. Although it was a bit hot and humid out there, they remained enthused to continue this activity at other parks and locations in Franklin Township to keep our outdoor spaces clean. Christian is a role model and inspiration for other youth and students from township schools. We invite other high schoolers to join Christian Wright as there are many community sharing areas in our town that need cleanup. For example, Durham Landed Park, Middlebush Park, Inman Park, Naman Williams Park, Six Mile Run Preserve, Castleton Park, other portions of DNR, Canal State Park located at Franklin, and Consoy Park. In addition, community cleanup events are good opportunities to bring awareness about the upcoming statewide ban on single-use plastic. As we continue to clean up now and after its implementation, we can measure the impact of the ban. The state law will phase in soon and will, will be in full effect by May 2022. Interested individuals can contact Rutgers Prep Director of Summer and Community Programs, Meredith Santuasso. 
Thank you, Stan. Uh, Nicely done. Yeah. Thanks, Stan. Um, I don't have the full text in front of me, so I wasn't able to follow along, but I had read it, and I mm -hmm. think you did a great job on this. I know that Ted sent a comment about the personal protective equipment, so I don't know if you made the change that he had suggested. Yeah. You did make that change? Yes, uh, and also uh, Robin made uh, some uh, suggestions. Okay. And he um, created them. Okay. There was also something um, where you talked about, uh, we really don't, um, something about um, Richter's prep, and you use that term in two places, and in one place you use, you spell prep with a capital P, and the other place with a small P, and I think it should be in a capital P in both places. And the word clean up I saw once, I think that should be hyphenated. Okay. The, the reporter may do some of this editing too. Yeah, I, I think this is this is wonderful, Stan. Very good. Thank you for doing this. Okay. So can I have a motion or shall I move it for I'll make a motion to approve this um with the with the minor corrections. Second. Which I just did. Okay, I've been moved and second that the article for the Franklin Reporter be approved with minor corrections. Do, do I have a, did we get a second? Yes, Robin seconded. Been moved and second. So all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. Okay, so the motion is carried. So um, Stan, you know what to do next. You have to contact them, I suppose, and uh, yes, and uh, Bill is on call, so he's already away. Oh yeah, he's out there. Okay, all right. Thanks again. All right, and uh, as I understand it, they they are they, the group is clearly in favor of doing additional work. This is not the end for yes, them. yes, yes. All right, thank you. All right. So this That's is being sent to the Franklin Reporter? Yes. Okay. All right, if we move. Can't hear you, Walter. The green infrastructure uh, strategic plan, I know Tara has been giving us, uh, you know, uh, updates and uh, I don't know where exactly we are now. Tara, what's the latest with the uh, green infrastructure? Um, so I talked to uh, Public Works about potentially um, doing a bioretention garden there. Um, not we're not really 100% sure that that's going to be the optimal place for it based on the the amount of by the time we construct it and how much runoff it's actually going to capture. We're not sure that is going to really work. So we're looking into the other sites. Sites. I'm still kind of working through that. I did meet with um, Bob Warnlocker the other day and kind of went over some of the ideas because some of the sites are other properties and we have not spoken with those landowners yet because we're trying to really figure out what's the maintenance going to be, what's the cost, how can we help fund it if it's more than you know, what we have available. Um, so we're still working through it little by little. I don't think DPW is going to work, um, but the new library site is putting the two bioretention gardens in. So maybe we can have Rutgers help with one of those, um, you know, like provide some guidance on that. Um, but we're still looking at the other sites. So I'll keep you all posted on how you move forward. Excellent. Okay. I think I I sent you a, a message with language about money from the um, the infrastructure bill. Yes, you did. Yes, thank you. That would be perfect. So that's one of the reasons why you know we have to really figure out what sites we're looking for because if it's not going to be on township owned property we have to make sure we first you know that those landowners even want to do that and if they do how can we go about helping out with you know whatever you know it could be funding it could be i don't know what exactly it would be but yes we're still looking through that okay all right very good Ooh. 
Were you watch the latest before you? Is Maria still here? Yeah, there you are. <laughs> well, Walter, say it again, because when you turn away, we can't hear you. Oh, okay, Maria, the uh, sub education uh, plastic ban education subcommittee report. report. Can you give us an update? Yes, um, from to my end, I uh, received an email from Mary Clark from the Franklin um, Board of Education in relation to uh, printing material for the students. They say they are not going to do the printing. Not, not that they didn't say that they're not going to the printing. That they will, they will prefer to distribute any information digitally in their website. Uh -huh. and Probably with an email blast. They also mentioned that um, they are going. They also uh, mentioned that they can also um, uh, not email, but um, I'm like, uh, let me go back to the email because I'm forgetting that they can partner. They can reach out to the high school environmental. Club of the school, and okay. potentially, probably that will be a, a good start for the environmental commission work with them. They will they will get back to me after the beginning of of the school year in September. And I think Maria, when you follow up with Mary, the middle school age kids are a good place to go as well, not just high schoolers. Is there a good entree into middle school? Because there's so much, so much character formation that happens at that age. To me, this is important. I agree with you, but um, I just send that I send that response to her. I think I forwarded to the subcommittee. Okay. I can um email, get back to her again, and and bring uh bring the the notion that we should include also the middle school students to see how they respond. Yeah. Uh, but they are, they are willing to cooperate. I think in our last in the last report, I also mentioned that the public library is interested in not interested. They will uh, allow us to have a, um, use their space for inform to inform the community. Um, so this is another venue that you would like to um, look at. Yeah. Very good. Actually. Mm -hmm. All right, and and certainly. The discussion we had about where Bob Unlocker is with the bags, etc. Um, that should become also part of this report. So we are, we are nearing, uh, I'll say, um, a final report, if you will, as soon as we get information back from the education the board of education. Is that right? Could you repeat that? Mm -hmm. Uh, I was saying, if we use the information from Bob Von Larkin's office and the latest information from the Board of Education, let's say once they respond mm -hmm. to including the middle school, then yeah. we will be ready to finalize the report. Oh, yes, from that end. Yes. Okay, yes. very good. All right. Thank you. Anybody have any questions or comments on that before we move on? All right. Um, Stain drain, drain storm drain program. Uh, Stan, what's the latest there? Me, uh, Tara. No, that's me. Tara. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> Sorry. So that's okay. Um, I did speak with. I'm just getting my email up here because I want to make sure I get this lady's name right. Okay. I spoke with Lois Kraus in Westfield. Um. We had, like, I think a pretty good, e I mean, we talked over email because we had like some conflicting schedule going on, but um, I was trying to find out specifically what data they're using to map their storm drains. So what I basically found out is what Westfield does is they pay, it's, they pay, let me get the name of this university right, Hamline University. Are you guys familiar with that? I'm not. Yeah. So, so they pay Hamline University to run the Adopt a Drain program, and they basically they have a platform, Hamline University, that already if you just send them your GIS layer that has like all of your town parcels in it, 
they upload it, they maintain it, they will show what's adopted, what's not adopted, and then all the websites, you know, kind of look alike. So the one that Westfield has looks exactly like the one in Missouri, and it looks exactly like, you know, all over the country. But what Hamline does is, you know, take the information in, keep it updated, and, you know, maintain the database. Um, so that is, they pay them $2,000 a year to do that. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing I asked her was how many participants, participants, oh my gosh, I'm getting tongue tied. How many participants do they have? And of those participants, how many of them are repeat participants? Like they continue to do the work on the storm green. So her response was that they have 260 drains out of the 2,700 drains in the township. So they ask that the people who adopted clean it out at least once a year. Um, the biggest problem they have is the reporting of it. So people do tend to go out there and clean out the drain, but they have to go on and log on that they've cleaned it out and what they cleaned out. And that takes, it only takes about two to five minutes, but they have a lot of, you know, it takes a while for them complete reminders all the time to get the reports in. Um, I also asked, you know, how they communicate with these participants. And she said that this system that they pay for through Hamline, when someone registers to adopt a drain, the system automatically generates a welcome letter to that person and it explains wow. the program in detail and gives them tips and, and all that. Um, and then the last question I asked her is what other kind of support do, do they use in terms of like the township staff or anything to keep this going? And her response was they really don't have any other support. Um, they just pay Hamline to do it because people use their own equipment. The people that adopt a drain have to dispose of the debris on their own. Um, the biggest thing they do is that they have an Instagram account that for the adopted drain and they also once a year have a little celebration with the mayor. Um, wow. So that was the information I gleaned from her. The one thing I did ask her as a follow up question, as I said, um, okay, I understand using the platform because that makes it very easy, obviously, but is this something that we would be able to do on our own? And her response was, you know, you probably could do it on your own. But by the time you get this data together, somehow put it into your own app um, and then follow up with all of the uh, reporting and, and everything that goes along with it, they estimated that it was cheaper to pay for the program to be administered than to pay an employee to do it. So Tara, yeah, I, I just looked up Hamline University. It's in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's the yeah. first public university in the state of Minnesota, mm -hmm. and they have big efforts about their students doing community service. Okay, so it must have grown out of that. And it occurs to me that maybe the two thousand could come out of clean communities money because it's literate. Right. It could. I'm sure it could. I'm sure it could. Yep. Yeah. It probably could, and the easiest thing is, you know, we do have that parcel data. We do have that at the township, so it would be a matter of our GIS person sending that those files. So it's one file. It's called a shape file, and then it has all of these corresponding files to it, and it would be sent to Hamline, and then they would create the website, put it into the platform, and I guess they you know, they update it. So if someone signs up, they update that website to show it. You know, it seems like it should be a good thing for the town because it gets more citizens involved. Yes. We will do the promotion of it. The town doesn't have to do that. We can help make sure that happens. We've got clean communities money for it and it will reduce the stormwater overflow that creates problems for Department of Public yeah. Works. I Is it one it time? I brought Sorry. it up at the land use committee meeting, and Carl Hauk agreed that it would be very helpful to public works. Oh, that's oh. great. That's great to hear. Tara, I just have a, a just a clarification. Mm -hmm. When we say um, that we're a, a storm drain program, 
We're just talking about cleaning off what is on the surface of that storm drain, clearing, clearing it away, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I looked at the website and what they recommend that you do is never remove the grate. Of course, they, they make right. that very right. clear, but absolutely you're to basically you're supposed to rake the top of it or sweep it with a broom, right. but they also do ask that you clean out any debris anywhere from like three to six feet on either side of the drain as well, because that prevents it from going in. And then you take that garbage yourself. And if it's like a water bottle, you're supposed to recycle the water bottle and throw the rest out. The reporting requirement, it's it's only I tried to see what it was like, but because there's no program in our community, I was unable to like register because you have to find an available drain first. So you have to register in Westfield, right? <laughs> I put in Westfield, yeah, but you know, I didn't want to like go through putting in, you know, a fake address or anything. So I could just reach out to you know Hamline or Westfield or whoever. But the reporting is really supposed to be, you know, I cleaned out the drain on this date. Here's what I got rid of, and I'm going to plan to clean it out again on this date. I think they ask everyone to try and do it at the minimum once a year, but they really want you to do it once a month if possible. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, I have a storm drain in front of my house, um, and once a year is definitely not enough. Right. Um, because of leaves and branches and all other kinds of debris that wash off of you know, trees and stuff from my property as well as stuff being that coming down the street from other properties. So, and it's also my understanding that you can take this and this can all be thrown into the regular garbage. Yes, as well, you know, unless it's like a recyclable material, but yes, the rest of it can be thrown into the regular garbage. Yeah. yeah but the most important part of the debris is usually leaves. Yes. yes. Which you would hardly put into the garbage. No, you compost them. Under the, I believe, under the DEP regulations, anything that is in the um, uh, curb that's in the street there, um, and, and this goes back three plus years ago when I was working with them, um, it was my understanding that those were called street sweepings, um, mm -hmm. which includes, you know, street sweepings, those leaves and debris and stuff has oil and you know transmission fluids and all different things mixed in which is why you might not want to put that in your recycling um bin so that's why it could it can go into regular garbage of course if there's a coke can or something else you know plastics or something that would go in the garbage but anything that is organic such as leaves and things like that, grass clippings, those could go into the garbage because mm -hmm. they are legally considered street sweepings under the DEP regulations. All right. That's helpful. Thank you. And All I right. you know with if we can promote this, we could get Christian Wright and his high school buddies interested in this. We could get the Franklin Township High well, School Environmental Club interested in this i mean it is it is really uh, i think uh, individual program because it, the, the most efficient it is that you don't need to drive anywhere you just right. pick something that is in front of your right. house or I mean, within if, we, if you get a 15 year old or a 17 year old to do this enthusiastically and they get their friends to do it in their neighborhoods yeah they can have an internal contest why not and it, it could <laughs> spread it could spread the word um, yeah. all right Excellent. Sarah, thank, thank you very much for, for pushing out all these details. What happened to get the name of the person you spoke with, Wallace? Uh, yes, her name is Lois. Um, Krause. Yes. Lois. Krause, yes. Oh, I know her. Yeah, Lois Krause, K R A U S, just K R A U S. So before we sign off on this, I just want to make sure I have my follow up tasks ready to go. So I'm going to ask Bob Warnlocker and Carl if we have clean community money to use this, right? Okay. And that makes sense. The, and then the other thing to keep, so I'll find out what the situation is with that. If for some reason that money is not allowed to do this, you know, there's a sustainable Jersey grant at the next round we'll be eligible for because we just cleaned, we just finished out the first grant. So we can always try and apply for a $2,000 grant from there. Um, 
And then the other thing to keep in mind is we can make an Instagram page. We do have Instagram, the township or Facebook, because she said one important thing is they have people go on with like a hashtag and that kind of spreads the word to other people. You know, people take a picture of themselves cleaning out the drain, mm. post it, yeah. it makes other people want to do it. So yeah. 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 All, right, I'll find that out. All right, very good. All right. Let's let's go into old old business uh walter at the beginning of the meeting excuse me but i told you that i had one other thing under yeah, yeah, um new yeah, business yeah, yeah. if i could quickly bring it okay. up sure. this is something that was brought to my attention Sorry, that, yeah mm -hmm. something that was brought to my attention last week and found some new information out about it today um so something new recently came up that some of you may have heard about regarding the cost of your home garbage pickup um, I just received some new information on it earlier today, but need to do some more research on it. And I believe Mayor Kramer and Assemblyman Danielson are aware of the situation. And Ted, you may you may be aware of it and may be able to provide some insight also. But first, what I'll tell you is this, that to start with, I received a notification last week that my waste hauler was going to reduce our pickups from two times to one time per week Due to workforce shortages, and they weren't and they weren't going to reduce my rate. I pay about sixty five dollars per quarter for pickup, two times per week for a sixty four gallon drum. Now I'm hearing what I heard today. I'm hearing that some people in Franklin have been paying up to four hundred dollars per quarter. I'm paying sixty five dollars per quarter. Some people were paying up to four hundred dollars per quarter. This is what I was told which sounds absolutely insane, not to mention the inequities are inappropriate and possibly illegal under DEP and BPU regulations. Like I said, there needs to be more research done because for me, this is a new issue and there are several waste haulers, several waste haulers in Franklin. And so I don't know if anybody else has had any, heard anything Wait about this. And, did, did and Ted, I don't know if you have any insight on this either. Did you say you pay 65 per quarter and you have two times per week service? That is correct with a 64 wow. gallon drum. Yeah. Because I have once per week service consciously because we have between one and two waste bins, uh, waste bags per week, okay, four member family, and we have $75 per quarter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If I could fill in on this, because Mayor Kramer reported on this at the last council meeting, that in fact he and Assemblyman Danielson went to the office, the local office of Republic, because nobody could get through on the phone, and billing is from some distant place. Uh, he reported that. Uh, they are short of drivers. They only have 18 drivers where they should have a minimum of 22. And they have a contract with South Brunswick to do all the garbage pickup in South Brunswick. And there are large fines proposed in that contract if they don't fulfill the requirements of the contract. So they really have to focus on getting all of the South Brunswick garbage picked up. So that's why they're cutting back in Franklin. He gave some indication that they would cut back on the fee for people who have been getting two pickups a week and now will be getting only one. I have the impression, I've been told this on other occasions, that these garbage companies are flexible on their fees. If you threaten to move to another company and they reduce your quarterly fee. But that's word of mouth. And Republic is um, the holder that I have. Um, but again, this is just information that I got from a third party today who was speaking to friends who said they were paying up to $400 per quarter, which uh, if that is true, 
um, somebody's ripping somebody off for that. I don't know. They might be putting out four garbage cans for each pickup. No, they were talking about the same kind of situation that I am. Um, I used to have. Sorry, it's it's it, it's or no, it's it's still not equitable. I mean, four hundred dollars per quarter. I um, used to have still the Republic still, service. If even if they're putting out four cans per quarter, that still doesn't come close to four hundred dollars per quarter. Um, and uh, if they're putting out four cans each time, it still doesn't come out to four hundred dollars per quarter. But whatever, uh, you know, I don't know what is true or what's not. I'm just telling you what was reported to me. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think that's something that uh, needs to be looked into to see, you know, what haulers are doing. Different haulers are 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 um, charging different amounts and. And I know there are part of these regulations are based on DEP regulations and part of them are based on BPU regulations. So um, I'm not sure who it is that would be looking into those, um, but I think there's got to be some quality, uh, equality as far as payment for your waste pickup. Is the price dependent on the address? Well, that person mentioned to me, the person that I spoke to today mentioned to me that it could be more in the, uh, you know, uh, what do they call them? McMansion type areas, um, but that still doesn't make it right. Okay. No. Because, because the haulers figure that they can get away with it. So well, this might be a BPU DEP situation, and maybe yeah. the BPU is the place to start. And I believe yeah. we have a council person on uh, who works for the BPU, who um, um, uh, Crystal, who, who who may be able to look into this. Crystal Pruitt. Okay. Well, this certainly is a very personal and um, you know issue that probably affects us and and a lot of other than it is the type of inequity that we we think we see here. Somebody has to do something. So. Let's do our own research. I don't know if any one of us has, um, you know, I'll call it, would want to take it on as, a, you know, the lead in doing this, but let's bring it back to the next meeting and uh, see where we are with that. How's that? Uh, uh, well, uh, let me ask Ted uh, this question. Since we know that the mayor and the assemblymen are both looking into this, um, I don't know who they've spoken to, but since uh, Councilwoman Pruitt is with the BPU, is she somebody that should be involved in this as well? We can ask. That's okay. all I ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If we if we move along here to uh, the um, old business. Oh, Yes, I'm sorry, before you move on, um, maybe for next meetings or the following meetings agenda, I'd like to talk about green infill in the more highly densely populated part of town. This kind of arose out of conversations about resiliency planning. And uh, some of us have exchanged some views through email, but I'd like to talk with other commissioners and with Tara about the possibility of leaving vacant lots in the northeast part of town green in a stand of trees, not necessarily a park, but ways to help make that part of town even more comfortable to live in with more green environment, cooler temperatures. So um, if we could just put that on the agenda for probably the... Sure the so first meeting in September. Yeah, that's and right down our alley. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All uh, right, Walter, before you move on to old business, um, I saw some emails going back and forth about the way our um, agenda is prepared. Yeah. And might I suggest that everything under new business at today's meeting, A through H or I or J, 
you know, including what I spoke about and what, yeah. um, Rob, well, what Robin spoke about might be new business, but everything that is under new business now should go under old business because it has all been discussed previously. So right. as of now, it seems to me the only new business item might be, unless something else comes up, the item that Robin just brought up. Okay. All right. I have no problem with that. And what Absolutely. you just brought up. Yeah. Well, that was that was discussed. I just discussed it. Um, so that's that was new business. Now it's become month, old business. At this me meeting, so it will be old business at the next meeting, I would I would think. Okay, we'll we'll figure that out then. All right, but certainly well, that's where I suggested in the even in the minutes that we could have new business for the truly new recent business for what was discussed at the immediately prior meeting and old business for things that go well back in time. I think that's a great idea, Ted, and I would like to see how you do that in your in your minutes. I, I would, you know, you've been doing the minutes for 20 plus years or whatever, and you do a great job. And if you want to change the format to reflect that, I think it would be beneficial to uh, to see it that way. Well, the reply I got was that this uh, that reordering the agenda would have to be discussed by the commission. That so fine. Let it be discussed. Okay. You brought it up, and I brought it up. I I, I support the idea. All right, very good. Uh, maybe we won't complete it all tonight, but we know at least the direction that we are going and the next agenda that I prepare will certainly be on the basis of what, what was suggested about current today's business being recent or, or, or I won't call it, it certainly shouldn't be new business again. And only one new item, uh, you know, would be one or two that we, we, Robin brought up and what have you that might be new. We'll see what happens. And we can further refine it going forward. How's that sound? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, how um, should we get there? Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh some water basin. I mean, I, I'm gonna go down here if any of you feel that you need to stop me. Um then you know do so. But stormwater basin retrofit program, I guess we've been We've been sort of talking about that, and I I, I believe that uh, uh, I believe that Tara is the person probably most knowledgeable along that line. But I think things are pretty much up to date. Um, sustainable Jersey, um, Ted. I don't know, but I did send out. I saw something off a webinar being offered by Sustainable Jersey. I believe. And, you know, it's with the idea that we should all be working towards trying to get the township to, you know, get a, a higher rating. And so this is sort of the, the, the way these webinars are going. And I thought it was a good idea. So I, I, I for if you wanted to, you got a chance to, you know, to tune in. And so that's out there. Uh, environmental Stewardship Awards, we know what we're going to do. We're holding and see if anything else comes up. We have some a couple names on the table. Uh, stream cleanup 2022. We know that we want to do it, but the details. Yeah, go ahead. I actually uh, happened to be in um, outdoors this past weekend because I. Anyway, um, oh. <laughs> and uh, so I was in the area of a brook whose name I don't remember, but this is the one that is coming from the Fox Creek. And uh, it uh, it uh, it's passing between Lakeside and Imperia, uh, all the way to uh, the canal and Raritan. And uh, I was there last year, and I reported that at, th at that time that there was not a appreciable amount of garbage. Um, this year, um, so do you see the picture? Yeah, I do. Okay, so so this building is uh, the hotel um, 
and Emporia is uh, on the on the right. You cannot see it actually on the picture. Um, and uh, behind the this this little wall, the, the garbage starts. Now I, I acknowledge that it's hard to see from this picture, so I'll just go to some other pictures. Here's a little bit more, and here it comes. You know, cans. And going further to the uh, woods uh, or to the creek, uh, so to speak, I discovered some spots that I have lots of um, aluminum cans. It looks like maybe a homeless or something. Um, and uh, so this is this is uh, this is now subject. Um, it, it, it's a candidate. Okay, this this area. Um, these are uh, plastic bottles, um, and this is shopping cart somewhere in uh, in this uh, you know creek hidden. It, it would be actually hard to pull it. We would have to use. Oh yeah, that, that's very. Um, there are also some tires. Actually, you can see he is this tire. No, no, it's not a tire. But I, I didn't take a picture of every tire. But uh, this looks like um, a liquor, you know, little bottles. Um, plastic bag with whatever. I don't know. I didn't check inside. Um, there's a crate for uh, bottles, I guess, the, in the back, the blue thingy. Um, and uh, here is one of the tires. Uh, and this is, um, I'll show you on the map. Uh, so it's a bottle, some uh, cables, loose cables. This is the area of, uh, I went further, I think I have to reshare. Uh, let me share the whole screen. And uh, I wonder where is the map? Is the map here? No, How about here. Well, anyway, let me use this window to. No, no, actually, I did have it open. Where was it? Apologize for the delay. No. This is. When is, when is the stream cleanup supposed to be, Stan? Oh, here. So we didn't set up the date yet, but it's typically in April. Okay, so we have plenty of time. So here, do you see the map? So this is Imperia, yeah. and the garbage with the homeless was here. It's in the back of the 2020 tab house, and there's a hotel behind. So it was here, and I kept walking here all the way to Long Day you know, Drive, and then I went to the other side. And this complex, residential complex, okay? So this is where I found additional garbage. So here is the stream, and here people are tossing stuff. No. Uh, and I didn't go further in this direction. I pretty much turned back. Um, I suppose suppose uh, there could be something here, but I didn't inspect this lakeside. I think the lakeside drive is more civilized because there are no, there are only uh, uh, individual houses on this side, and I don't think people will be throwing stuff here. But back to the pictures. So. This is this is in the area that I was showing you uh, in uh, the apartment complex, and um, here uh, on the right side you can see the fence of uh, the area of, with garbage. But on the other side, uh, where do I have plus minus? And is the point of this to show us that this is the place that we should be planning on for next April? I think it's a candidate. It's a candidate, okay. and uh, the other thing uh, is if so that that would be like a diversity. If we want to show that we have more streams and invite people.
to different locations. So this is how the, the apartment complex look like. Um, the other option would be to close the loop because uh, we can always go back to mile run. Uh, this is the one that I started with when I uh, took over this task. Um, sorry. I just comment that all of that along Cedar Grove Brook is private property. It's not township property. Specifically, is this Cedar Grove Brook? That's called Cedar Grove Brook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there may even be other names. I call it Cedar Grove Brook. Um, is this private property? Well, up as far as the hotel, at least, it belongs to the Imperio. Oh. It actually, oh. Brook. Mm hmm. How about this 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 section that starts with the the twenty tab house? Is this already? Is this also private? I'm sure all of it's private. Okay, then it's so Ted. Uh, if if, if, if so, so, I know so Ted, about, two points. One, if it's private property, um then they have all this dumping on the property and they should be taking care of it themselves, um, which is one issue, or the possibility of us asking permission to go on their property to do this cleanup. Um, they might look at it as a liability issue, but the bottom line is it's their land. It needs to be cleaned up. It could be, it could be considered an illegal solid waste dump site. Um, so one way or the other, this area needs to be cleaned up, whether it's by one of our stream cleanups or by the Imperia. And I would suggest that um, uh, an inspector from the township could go out there if they had the time and take mm -hmm. a look at it and make a decision as to whether this is something that uh, needs to be cleaned up by the Imperia. And if not, there's the possibility of a fine for letting their property um, get into in this kind of condition. Well, I prefer to start with the carrot rather than the stick. But... And, and I'm fine. I'm fine with that also. Absolutely, Ted. I would start with the carrot also. Yeah. Um, but it is well, their property. I and... I had contact with them, oh, some years ago because the. The new water supply authority has things it would like to do with that property. Although the guy that from the water supply authority that went to meet with uh, the Imperia with me uh, has since retired, and his much younger successor says, Well, they don't have the money for it uh, right now. And I've forgotten just what it was that they wanted to do. I, I remember his name, Kyle something. I, I, but I want to say that that I started the inspection somewhere around this area. I am not sure whether this is still belongs to Imperia. Yeah, well, the hotel is is under the same ownership, basically. Oh, is it? Okay, I parked here. And I crossed this thing. So I was trespassing, you are saying, right? <laughs> Do we have bail money in our budget? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Uh, and then that T-shaped building up there, that's a, a Presbyterian homes. It's sort of assisted. I don't know whether it's full-scale assisted living, but it's definitely senior apartments. Oh yeah, it's on uh, this one. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that's it. I've never been in there, but I. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Um, and uh, it's a, a some Bob something way. I forgot. Bob this. Frank's way. He was. The yeah, there we, there, there we go. There we go. Funny. Okay. <laughs> All right. Look, I, I think we definitely need this type of advance. Uh, uh, surveillance, if you want to call it that, and, and so that we have time to 
narrow it down, uh, you know, one so, or two candidates? So this area is owned by uh, the property owner of, of this complex? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know just how the property lines go up there. Mm, the chances are probably. Right. Go look at the tax maps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what you show there as a lake, in my memory, it was a lake, and it's now mostly filled in with sediment. And that's what the water supply authority would like to remove. So this thing? Because, uh, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, it's not exactly open water anymore. You see, that is probably the largest stream that goes directly into the canal rather than under it. And the sediment from it then has to be removed when New Brunswick draws on the canal for its water supply. Mm -hmm. So the Water Supply Authority has a real interest in cleaning that up. Okay, so that concludes uh, my report. Uh, well, thank you, Snyder. Um, so, so my uh, take from this is that, um, is it better to go with the mile run? I didn't expect it yet, but uh, uh, from from the ownership viewpoint, although Arnie mentioned that one way or another it has to be cleaned. So uh, show me well, the carrot and you know we we have a lot of time to make this decision. Yeah. It's not until okay. April, so uh, correct. Maybe if more information is found out about the two different properties between now and yeah. then, the next okay, I can month or so, we'll be able to make a more informed and educated decision. Mm -hmm. I probably find out through Rajiv Prasad how to contact the owner. Okay. I remember what happened was Bob O'Neill and I got there, and after 20 minutes, uh, an engineer and somebody else associated with the property came, and we had an opportunity to convince them of the need for this project because the, it was 40 minutes before the owner arrived. And that actually, I think, worked better than having to talk to the owner immediately, directly. All right. Okay. Ted, Ted, do you know who owns the Mile Run property? Oh, that's Township. It is Township. Okay, great. All right. Okay. All right. If, if we, we are, we are coming down to the end here. Uh, plan review checklist, we've already talked about. That's gonna be an item on the next agenda and Robin is suggesting that uh, we all read it thoroughly and-, and, and uh, Tara you know, just emailed it to us, so we all have just it. Just emailed, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, that the that we Can't hear you, Walter. You Looking away. So I stopped this set program at the warehouses. I know that the mayor and uh, Bob Bonlock, I believe, are moving on that. I don't know what the latest is. Walter, if I could just uh, discuss this. Yeah. So um, I drafted a letter as I was asked to prepare during our last meeting for us to submit to the council. I sent it to the commission members a few days ago for everyone's review. Um, I've, I've been told there was a positive discussion about this at last week's council meeting based on the knowledge of our discussion at our last meeting, or at least partially based on our discussion. Um, I prepared the letter before the I prepared the letter before that council meeting. So Walter, with your permission, I'd like to read the letter out loud for everybody to hear it and then see if there's any discussion on it before we vote to approve or not. It should only take about two minutes, okay? Okay. So, to the mayor, council, and township manager, 
We recently learned that the township is taking our recommended motor vehicle anti idling initiative a large step further. We have been advised that our DPW is in the process of making new anti idling signs to be installed in all of our parking public parking areas throughout the township. Manager Bornlocker indicated that if we're going to require motor vehicle no idling signs for new commercial development, we should lead by example, which we agree is the perfect leadership approach. Further, we were advised Mr. Bornlocker indicated that an amendment to the townships development ordinance is being drafted to address installing motor vehicle no idling signs as per our recommendation. We believe these new uh, new anti idling signs will help educate our residents and visitors and hopefully facilitate the reduction of our local air pollution that impact our highly vulnerable populations, including the elderly and young children, as well as the bigger picture of reducing greenhouse gases that affects climate change. This could also be a stepping stone for the council to require that eventually all commercial establishments with dedicated parking areas, including convenience stores, grocery stores, and shopping centers, as well as schools where buses are frequently observed idling for lengthy times, to be required to install these signs throughout their parking and waiting areas. We hope this will be considered as part of the, of the amendment to the development ordinance. There is another consideration when discussing motor vehicle idling signs in places such as convenience store locations. There have been many reported incidents over the past several years throughout the state of motor vehicles being stolen from convenience store parking lots when people go into the stores while leaving their cars running. Perfect opportunity for a waiting car thief, another good reason for no idling signs in these locations, a reminder for people to turn off their engines. One other thought, if the township isn't already acting on this, we suggest that the township provide a list to the county health department of all the commercial and school properties that will be required to have these signs installed. This should lead the county health department adding these properties to their list of sites that they monitor under their DEP motor vehicle anti idling surveillance program. Until we've made the full transition to non fossil fuel vehicles, this initiative would play a critical role in keeping our environment as healthy as possible for our township residents. Thank you to the mayor. Uh, thank you to the manager, the mayor, and the council for accepting our no idling initiative and making it better. Respectfully submitted Franklin Township Environmental Commission. And Walter, I'd just like to make two quick comments before I make a motion and then possibly discussion on it. First, thank you to Robin for helping with the last sentence about how this would be critical in the role uh, during our transition away from fossil fuels. And second, regarding the point made about idling motor vehicles at places such as convenience stores, a perfect place for car thieves to stalk their victims who leave their car keys in their ignition. As Councilman Chase has stated, sometimes these cars have children or infants in the back seat. So what could be more scary than that? Maybe more okay. scary than the air pollution giving us a dual reason for installing these signs at convenience stores and strip malls. That all said, I would like to make a motion to approve this letter to be sent to the council. Have a second? Second. Okay, I don't know. Is there, is this a point for any discussion or do we have to go in straight to the vote? No, if there's a, you know, after a second, there's discussion yeah. and, uh, and then if um, there's no discussion, you vote. Okay. Um, I have um, Arnie, and this is this is wonderful. Thank you. So preparing this uh, letter as well as uh, spearheading uh, the idea of um, of no idling uh, pushing in our township. Um, I I I like the whole thing. The the one thing that I'm seeing a little bit distraction is uh, the incidence of theft. Um, I think that it is more related to maybe technology maybe behavior uh that those who want to leave their vehicle idling they can do so and and lock the vehicle um so no, no? yeah well I, they I, can lock the vehicle but they're still breaking the law by idling 
Yes, whether yes, they have exactly. A, whether they have but a child the, in the car or not. Yeah. And cars yeah. still can be broken into when they're idling. I mean, car thieves easily can break into a car within seconds, even if it's locked. If the keys are in the car, they're gone. So, so what and is the, the relationship of having? Go ahead. What is the relationship between the breaking and and the idling? Well, the relationship is mostly if there is a child in the car. Yeah. Uh, this just this just is a way of emphasizing the need to stop cars from idling in in places like convenience stores or shopping centers or or strip malls. Um, it just gives another justification. Another, a justification. Thank you for um, putting these signs up. Yeah, it, it solves two problems potentially, not just one. Yes, and and my question was, which is which is worse, possibly having a car stolen with a child in it or the air pollution? Um, you know, it's the air pollution would be much more frequent. It sort of asks for a subsidiary sign saying, "Take the keys with you." Yeah. Take the child with you. Or, yeah, I, I, that's what I am kind of thinking that this is auxiliary. This is is the word auxiliary. It's just the different different topic here. But Stan, I don't think we should split hairs over it at this point. I think we should just get the letter off and out. And if the okay council feels that way, they can. But I think it helps them helps them vote yes. Okay. And this is just a, that's a very good point. It, hopefully it helps them vote yes or take part of what we're asking for. Um, but um, again, this is just our recommendation. Um, I, can I just share something I saw on the library? Sure. Um, I went to make copies on Saturday um, and I saw an Evelyn card, but he had a pet inside. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, in this weather. Wow. In this weather, yeah, they had a pet. Well, power. Yeah. I tell you, there is. Um, uh, it's an anecdote, I guess. Uh, so Teslas, they have the feature, uh, dog, dog feature or something. When they have a dog inside of the vehicle, they turn on the AC. The vehicle is not making any noise, obviously, and the screen in the vehicle says. Uh, my owner uh, is taking care of me, and the, oh, and the temperature is being displayed on the uh, on the display. So and that the Tesla what, and the Tesla is not polluting the air. Right. So well, that's the separate thing. But but they want to kind of uh, show the, the bypassers in case they are concerned that the dog is locked. Yeah. That uh, hey, you know, this is monitor situation, and this is the temperature because the AC is on. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I think we should call the question. Okay. Well, it's been moved and second that uh, we. Uh, I'm sorry. Did we send this to council or what? Yes. Yeah, I, I, did, I, I think my motion is to send this to council um, and to uh, manager um, and, and, and the manager and Anne Marie McCarthy. So we want, we don't want it to go to Anne Marie to send to the others. We want to send to all three of them at the same time. Manager, Using, the manager. Yeah. The, it's the not council. a resolution. Yeah. No, it's not a resolution, but it's a, a, to the to the manager, okay. to the council, which includes the mayor yeah. and Anne Marie McCarthy. Okay. All right. Okay. So you've heard the motion. Um, and we've had a second, we've had discussion. So all in favor that the letter as read here be sent forward to those said people, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All right, any opposed say nay. Ah, okay, so you have the motions carried. The letter will be sent forward. Thank you everybody. And Walter, yes. at, at a future meeting, I would like us to talk about the idling that takes place at traffic lights. I think oh, particularly yeah. of- That's a um, big one. 
<laughs> of Veronica Boulevard and Route 27 with all the new warehousing and the uh, wheelers. There's a great uh, deal of idling there. And I'd like to learn about roundabouts and how they're coming about either through state regulation or township initiatives so we keep traffic moving. All right. Um, yeah, the, uh, can I, if I could just comment on that, Robin, um, idling while in traffic is not considered a violation. No, no, I'm uh, not. I didn't realize uh, that. Let me just, let me just finish. Now there are, there is different types of equipment that can be installed on these trucks or motor vehicles that might reduce the, the, um, emissions. I think, yeah. But, but in, in traffic, that. there in traffic, there it's there's not considered a, a violation. Right, and I I'm not thinking of it as a violation, but I'm thinking mm -hmm. of it's it. It's the pollution. Of, of the pollution, Ted, you had some comment to make. Uh, when we had the plans for the Dunkin' Donuts proposed very near the Veronica Route 27 intersection. They admitted that it it can take seven minutes to get out of Veronica mm -hmm. through that mm -hmm. stoplight. So you can see how much idling there could be there. It may take a number of changes of the light yeah. to get through. Yeah. But yeah, that's not a place where there's going to be a roundabout, I don't think. That wouldn't have, any, think that wouldn't have anything to do with uh, overbuilding, would it? Uh -huh. Well. Uh -huh. But I'd like I'd like to learn about where and when roundabouts are being considered. I know that, for example, we have the safe streets program that if you're going to do improvements, you have to do better crosswalks. You have to plant trees, you bike lanes. Is there something similar when you're going to do road improvements? Do you have to think about putting in roundabouts instead of traffic lights and understanding what those parameters are? at the state level or the local level, because with all the warehousing, we're only going to get more. We all see it there getting off of 287. Yes, we do. The canal. Um, and I see it at Veronica. It's a 10. Yeah, and almost Route every 27 day. is state, right? Or, yes. or is it county? Yes, it's state. State, and it's divided between two townships. And two so counties. Counties. And even counties. Yeah. So I realize I mean, it's complex, uh, but I think it's something worth in Europe uh, because I have this bias. Uh, uh, roundabouts are much more common. Yes. Here, roundabouts don't even have uniform rules. But they are. Very, it's they very are, confusing. There are more of them coming. I see them being built out on Long Island. They are better. They in are better. Heavily developed areas. So I'm just curious if anybody has any knowledge on um, New Jersey or Franklin regulations about them. Well, I, I think we want to ask Ridewise Somerset. They should. Good yes. yes. Good point. Thank you, Ted. Very good. All right. Okay. Um, so uh, if we move. Sustainable landscaping. I believe, Robin, you you brought that as a suggestion. We had talked about that before, and I don't know. I think, we I think that was Stan um, promoting. Oh, is that right? I'm sorry. Initiatives in Princeton. Um, ah. Oh yeah. Uh, and using yeah. electric equipment. Um, oh, oh. Okay. I can I can share my experience how I posted their uh, event on Facebook and then I have been beaten again. Uh, so uh, I, I think that um, I, I should stop doing it as a single person. And if we have um, um, agreement on uh, uh, promoting uh, sustainable practicing, then we should um, we should start doing it as a, as a team, not, you know, as an individual. Okay. I think that's Stan, that's if you're talk if you're talking about leaf blowers and things like that, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm sort of been working on that a little bit of a time, um, but I don't anticipate having anything ready until sometime near the end of the year. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. you know, if we can wait on that. I, you know, right. Yeah, yeah. There is there is no rush. It. Yeah. 
but uh, um, just uh, they have uh, sustainable Princeton. They have they have this nice workshop, and and they are saying that uh, they will have some goodies for those who attend. Uh, they will have uh, vendors displaying uh, electrical leaf blowers and equipment, and they have a raffle uh, for one of them. So I think this is this is very no, don't laugh. No, no, I agree. I, yeah, that's the type of a uh, robust type of uh, program you want. Uh, you know. Okay. Um, the EC webpage subcommittee. I know that's one of our oldest subcommittees, and they have done their job. And uh, uh, it's a matter now of uh, us going on the site and testing out, you know, the new layout and what have you, and uh, still give some feedback. Uh, and and keep posting content. So I think okay. Stan's, Stan's article. Yeah, he yeah. Wrote about the um, well, Je Jessica student. wanted to have all uh, the content being posted on a regular basis, you right. know. Uh, yeah, my, my point is your article, I think, would be a good thing that could be posted. And yeah. maybe Stan, if you send it to Jessica, she could send it on to Krista or somebody else in Bob McQueen's office mm -hmm. and put that on the website. I think even Arnie's letter to the council would be good to put on the website. To show people where we're, we're, doing we're moving, we're, we're is it okay to have it published in uh, multiple ways? Well, yes, yeah. it's the yeah. better, the broader it's spread, the better. Okay, okay. I would encourage both of you, the, the authors of these two pieces, to send them to Jessica and say, We'd like to see these maybe in any form of social media, including our website. So people get the sense that our commission does something. Mm -hmm. Agree. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. We happen to be doing something actually. <laughs> All right. If we go down before we open to the public, um, I know the Joint Shade Tree Environmental Commission Subcommittee is something that is being considered, or you know, is maybe sort of out there but we're waiting for them to i guess take the next step yeah i don't think there's anything i don't think it needs to be on the list for the moment okay all right but, um we did some work for the shade tree commission about strengthening their ordinance what they might like to do with it there may be another issue that pops up down the line where it'd be good to put people together but i don't okay. think it's, it, it has any standing work at the moment would you say that's fair arnie I'm sorry, can you repeat that, please? That the um, sh Joint Shade Tree EC subcommittee doesn't have any standing work at the moment, that we could take it off the list, but if an issue should arrive where it makes sense for us to put our heads together, we could reconvene. I agree, and one of the members up from the Shade Tree Commission, I believe, just dropped out of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, now... We are ready for to open to the public again. Did I get a motion? So moved. Motion. Second. Okay, been moved and second that we open the meeting to the public. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so open the meeting to the public. Okay, so uh, Mark Renfrey, I'm going to unmute you. Are you with us? Still nothing from me, thanks. Okay, I'm going to mute you back. Uh, Franklin Reporter, I, I'm going to unmute you now. I'm good, thank you. Thank All you right. for sticking with us. Very good. Speaking of the public, does, did anyone follow up with the guy who was on the Cranford EC and has moved to Franklin? Well, that was Walters brought him up. Oh, Brian, I mean. No, that was... Paul, Paul brought him on board, and uh, I think he had all the material that he needed. I mean, we're just waiting to see if he will or will not. Uh, has everything been submitted to Anne Marie? I don't, I'm, I don't know. He has the material. He has access to it. Whether he has done so or not, I don't know. If Paul, Did I move to close the public. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're second. right. Did they move a second that we close to the public? All in favor, let me know by saying aye. 
I I ain't opposed, say nay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, with regard to the potential new me bo board member, commissioner, um, Paul is the person closer to that gentleman. Uh, as I understand, he has, he knows where the, uh, I won't call it the application, but all the material is just has he or will he at some point um, done anything with it. And I'll, as soon as Paul gets back, I'll try to determine that. And uh, if I have to go to Anne Marie, I'll do that as well. Sounds like he could be a nice addition. Yeah. Well, he might be a little burned out. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Very good. Excellent. Um, do we have a motion for adjournment? So moved. I'll come in mood and second that we adjourn the meeting tonight. So thank you very much. All in favor, let me know and saying aye. 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 Uh, okay, the meeting's adjourned and thank you. Thank you very much. We were